Hi, I'm Miriam Carter. Welcome to the Carter household. Today we are making a kitchen sink stir fry because we had a bunch of vegetables. We got adventurous and decided to buy a bunch of vegetables and try and figure out what to do. So we're making kitchen sink stir fry. I just created that name. One of the things I'm going to be doing is I'm going to cut up some bell peppers. Brian already partly prepped, prepped them for me when the kids were eating them. But I'm going to teach you how I cut up a whole bell pepper. Got a little trick. One of the things I used to struggle with bell peppers is I didn't like cutting them up because the seeds got everywhere. So I learned a little trick I wanted to show you guys today. So here we go. First thing I'm going to grab is my petite santoku. I'm going to cut the very top of the bell pepper off so you'll see this inside. Next I'm going to grab my, um, what's this called? <laughs> We're going to edit this out. Next, I'm gonna grab my gourmet paring knife and just make little marks down the side. I'm actually cutting out the core, so you might have to just barely touch it two or three times. And then, here's the magic. You twist it just a hair, pop. Look at there. I think there's two seeds in there. So then, pull it out, and I usually give it a quick tap right here. Three little seeds pop out and I'm done with de-seeding my bell pepper. Pretty cool, huh? So from there, you can prep it however you want your bell pepper cooked, whether you want it in little pieces for stir fry like I'm cooking, or if you want it in um, longer pieces to dip in hummus or ranch, let's be honest. So from here, I'm just going to chop it up for my kitchen sink stir fry. See, the more you say it, catches on. Got your pretty little bowl there to see all my pieces. Now, if you're new to eating bell peppers, you'll notice in the store there's typically three colors, green, red, and yellow. Um, green is gonna be a little bit more of your hearty vegetable taste, and then your red and yellow are actually sweeter, if you can say that about a vegetable. I like to kind of give a little mix of them. Um, I'm using red and yellow today because that's what we had in the fridge. But you could use any bell pepper you have. So, got the majority of my bell pepper cut and then I just have the top, no seeds. And I typically just cut the sides off around the top of the bell pepper, chop those up however I want. And then, I'm done. I'm gonna cut this up real quick because it's bugging me in there. You'll notice we have a plethora of goldfish because it is quarantine time. So we're making use of what we have and eating everything that we have. So today we're making kitchen sink stir fry with our Cutco wok. And I love the wok because it cooks evenly all around the sides, all over the top. So to get your wok ready, you wanna preheat it so that it is nice and hot on our range it's right around medium um, and then I'll show you in just a minute how to test that it is ready to put food in. I'm going to put my lid on so it gets nice and warm. While the wok preheats I'll show you what we got. Um, we're going to be adding some bell peppers, red and yellow, some zucchini, mushrooms, carrots, cabbage, and then some very smelly onions right now. <laughs> this is kitchen sink stir fry, so it is whatever sounds good to put in there. Uh, we have some sesame, sesame seed oil, which I like a lot. Um, we're gonna put some soy sauce in it uh, for a little kick, sriracha, and you can use any oil that you'd prefer. I have some safflower oil that I love cooking with because it gets to a high temperature and it will not burn and it really doesn't have a flavor, so that's a bonus. And then we have some, some, some garlic because we have it. Okay, our wok's been heating for a few minutes and so let's test it with just a teaspoon of water and see how it is ready. Okay. You see, you saw the, um, the steam rise up. That means it's not quite ready for cooking. You want all of those little beads to just dance across the pan. So at this point, we're gonna wait a couple more minutes and try it again and see if the beads of water dance around the pan. And then that's how we'll know it's ready.
First, we're gonna add in our oil, in this case, safflower oil. Just enough to kind of coat the bottom. You can always add more later. Then our carrots. I'm gonna let those cook and soften. So when you're putting fresh ingredients in, you want to keep you want to keep it in the bottom center because that's where the pan is hottest in a wok. And then as we add new ingredients in, we're going to push them out of the way and add the, the new ingredients into the actual center of the wok. So we're going to get the carrots cooked and a little bit softened. They will continue to cook while we are cooking other ingredients, but you want to get them to a good soft state before you put your next ingredient in. And normally when we would have prepared carrots for a stir fry, we would have julienned them into thin strips. But because we had them already prepared for salads this week, we used what we had because again, kitchen sink stir fry. Alright, our carrots are nice and soft. I put the lid on so that it would speed up the cooking time a little bit and create a little bit of an oven. So we're ready for our next ingredient. Alright, let's move our carrots out of the way and make room for our bell peppers. I'm sliding some of our vegetables up that have already cooked alongside the upper edge of the wok. And look how much room we still have. The wok has so much room. It's made for cooking big meals and big stir fries. All right, let's get this wok ready for our zucchini now. See how we can push it up all the way to the edge and there's still plenty of room in the center. By putting the vegetables up on the edge, all the way up, they're gonna stay warm, but it's gonna keep the hottest part of the wok ready for cooking the next vegetable. So pretty. Let's put the lid on and let it cook for a minute. All right, let's see what we look like. Oh, this smells delicious. Let's give these zucchinis a toss. Ah, cooking nicely. I'm gonna put the lid on for another minute. We are looking good, and I like a little bit of a crunch with my zucchini, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it to the side and get ready for my next ingredient, which is mushrooms and onions. I'm gonna add just a little bit of oil for the remaining ingredients to cook in. I like lots of onions. So add your desired amount. I'm gonna toss them just a little bit in the center so they're coated in that oil. And then we're gonna put the lid on and cook for a few more minutes. Doesn't that look nice? Oh, that smells so good. These mushrooms and onion give a wonderful aroma with all the vegetables. Oh, they're cooking nicely. So tonight we're making a vegetarian stir fry. So you can really add anything that you want to this. So our last ingredient we'll add here in a minute is the cabbage. And keep in mind, you can do all cabbage, you can do cabbage and rice of any choice that you want, um, or you can do just rice. You can add cauliflower, broccoli, sugar snap peas, peas, 
comment below. See if you have any other things to add to it or your favorite ingredients. All right, let's let this cook just another minute. All right, let's see how we're cooking. Oh my goodness, look at those mushrooms. Cooked together. Ah, I think we are ready for cabbage. Isn't it amazing how much you can actually put in a swok? Those sides are packed and staying warm. All right, cabbage. <laughs> Okay, and the cabbage will cook pretty quick, so we're gonna put the lid on for a few minutes and it'll just wilt down and then we can stir it all together, add our sauce and add our special just, topping ingredient. We just wanted to, we just wanted to <laughs> can eat we it on the table. All right, let's see. I'm gonna toss it a little bit. And it is already starting to cook. I can feel it softening up. One more minute and then I'm gonna mix it all together for the final cooking. Very nice. I'm gonna go ahead and toss these ingredients together. And the temperature of the other ingredients will probably start to actually cook the last, the last cooking of the cabbage. Doesn't that look nice? All right. I'm gonna add in my sauce that I prepared earlier. All right. Let's see how that looks. So I'm gonna stir these up, put the lid back on just for one minute. You could almost even turn off your stove top if you'd like. We're good. Final ingredient is my one of my favorites, sesame seeds. You can add as many or as little as you would like. Pop them on there, give it a stir. All this goodness on here. Delicious. Let me know how you like this recipe. Try yours out at home.